here we are looking at the biopsy from the uterine cervix and this is the part of the transformation zone. Here we have the exocervical or ectocervical non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and here we have the endocervical component with the endocervical glands. Uh, this is the normal epithelium and here we have the high grade of dysplasia uh, in the squamous epithelium and also in some endocervical glands. Let's take a look at the normal stratified squamous epithelium and well, we are going to compare that with the dysplastic uh, epithelium. So here we see the normal basal layer. Uh, next to the basal layer there, is a parabasal, there are the parabasal cells, the intermediate cells and superficial cells. The maturation is preserved and the nuclei are smaller and smaller and these superficial cells actually have really small pycnotic uh, nuclei. The cytoplasm is more voluminous and the nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is very small in the superficial cells. On the other hand, in the dysplastic epithelium, uh, the maturation is disrupted. The cells uh, do not mature. Uh, the cells with the bigger nuclei and small cytoplasm are seen not only in the basal layer, but also in the upper portions of the epithelium. Nuclei are irregular, hyperchromatic, and we can see multiple mitotic figures here, here, and also here, here. The maturation is completely lost, and um, in this part of the slide we can see the infiltration of the endocervical glands. The basement membrane is still intact, and this part of the epithelium is not associated with invasive growth. Squamous cell atypia in cervical transformation zone uh, is typically associated with high-risk HPV infection. The squamous intraepithelial lesions are traditionally described as cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, and they can be differentiated into three subtypes, CIN1 CIN or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1, is a low-grade lesion and CIN2 and CIN3 are high-grade lesions. Now according to the last WHO classification, uh, the preferred nomenclature is low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion or LSIL and high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion or HSIL. And this is an example of the HSIL. HSIL is typically associated with high-risk HPV infection, especially with the high-risk subtypes like 16, 18, 31, 33, and also other. And a lot of HSIL cases can still regress, but some of them can progress to carcinoma. The grade of dysplasia is important um, in the grading. So this is the typical HSIL. Uh, with no maturation, a lot of mitotic figures, a lot of apoptotic body bodies, um, increased nuclear size and hyperchromasia in all layers of the epithelium. The nuclei are crowded. We can see uh, enlarged nuclei sometimes with irregular nuclear contours. So this is the typical example of CIN3 or HCL in the cervical biopsy. Thanks for watching.